Let's take a look at how we can calculate derivatives numerically with a TI-83 and TI-84 graphing calculator. In the math menu, option 8 is labeled N derive, and that stands for numerical derivative. And I can use that command to find the derivative of a function at a single point, provided that it's not too scary. So there, we'll look at an example where the derivative kind of fails, where this command fails to give us the answer that it should. So the way it works, let me show you how to do it for a function here. Uh, if I enter the function, I need to use parentheses around that denominator to make sure that it's entered incorrectly. And then I need to tell the calculator that the variable is x. And then I want to enter the number that I'm looking for the derivative value at. So I'm looking for the derivative at the value x equals 3. And so the command will go through a series of calculations. And what it just found for us is that the derivative is roughly negative 0 0.093. Let's say 0 0.094. To talk about that command in general, let me let me write out you know, how to do that. So it's it's n derive, and then you want to enter the function, and then you want to enter the variable, and then the value. And the what I mean by that is the x value, the input value. Newer TI-84s have a slightly different format uh, called MathPrint in the mode menu, let me change this to radian mode, and, and in the mode menu if I go down to uh, the next screen here there's a math print versus a classic print. What we just saw in the TID3 corresponds to the classic print. The math print presents things in the calculator more in the way that we would write them, you know, more in the style of how we might write them by hand. So let's take a look at what this end derived command looks like in the math print mode. So if I go to the math menu and, and down to option 8. Again, I could just type the number 8 to get to the end derive command, but let me go down to the number the number 8 and then hit enter. And it brings up this notation in sort of a Leibniz Leibniz notation style where x is the variable, so corresponding to the standard notation, the classic notation, x is the variable. So I want to enter x in there. And then I can enter the function here, and, and so my function is sine of x. So I can enter sine of x as the function. And then if I want to find the value of the derivative at pi over 8, that corresponds to the x value. And so I can enter pi second and then pi over 8 and hitting enter, we get a value for the derivative. So the derivative value, numerically, is going to be approximately equal to 0.924. Finally, let's look at one more example where things kind of fall apart here. The derivative of the absolute value function, so if I go to math, the math menu, option 8, I want to find the derivative of the absolute value function, so first let me enter x, and then absolute value is in the math menu under the number tab. It's the first expression there. And in math print, it looks the way we write it, you know, the bar notation. And let's say I want to find the derivative at 0. And so the calculator kind of works through some, some things, and it comes up with an answer of 0, but that's actually false this answer should not equal zero because uh, this expression it actually is not differentiable at x equals zero because for the absolute value function at x equals zero we get a cusp there's a sharp corner point there and so the derivative, as it comes in from the positive side, the derivative, as it comes in from the negative side, it disagrees, because over here the slope is equal to positive 1, over here the slope is equal to negative 1. And so the derivative function is actually undefined at 0. It's positive for all positive numbers, 
it's negative for all negative numbers, uh, it's positive 1 for all positive numbers, it's negative 1 for all negative numbers, and so if f of x equals the absolute value of x, this is what f prime of x would look like. But the calculator can't really figure that out. So with a graphing calculator, it's doing this numerical process that compares what's happening up here with what's happening down there, and it decides that between 1 and negative 1, uh, the value for the derivative should be 0, but it's not. So you have to be a little bit careful using the end derive command because you can run into uh, these issues of differentiability. It works fine. It will, it will you know, typically give you a, a good answer, provided that your function is differentiable. But if it's not, the calculator will you know, sometimes misinterpret that. From what you've seen in the video, try to use the end derive command to find the derivative, let's say something that we know, try to find the derivative using the end derive command of x squared when x equals 4. I encourage you to take a few minutes and try that problem. That is, I hope, something that's you know, pretty easy for you to check uh, without end derive. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.